program forward. Okay, last but not least, let's go through a few tips to help increase the effectiveness of your ability to influence senior leadership and adopting continuous improvement. Number one, play the long game. Number two, leverage outside resources. And number three, demonstrate success, walk the talk. Let's dive into each of those here now. Number one, play the long game. Be willing to lose the short-term battle in order to win the long-term war. That is a very strategic thinking. I remember when I first started my career as a industrial engineer and uh, I was coached to, to go out and advocate more strongly for you know increasing productivity, driving changes, making improvements. And one of the questions I came back as a junior engineer was, okay, if I'm gonna go out in here and battle, what's my sword? You know, what am I battling with? What tools do I have to attack the bad and defend the good, right? The answer I got was a brilliant answer. Your tools as a continuous improvement professional is the truth. And the truth is backed up by, of course, data, direct observations, what's obvious and apparent with your own eyes, and what others who are close to the process or close to the value stream will testify to through interviewing and other means. That's your sword, essentially. That's what you have to go out and fight the good fight. Your shield is persistence. You're gonna lose a lot of short-term battles, especially in an organization that does not have a strong CI culture. The politics will beat you in the short run almost every time. Essentially, you are a scientist and you're not just experimenting with changing processes and improving immediate business results. You're also experimenting with the organization. You're also experimenting with the leaders you're trying to influence. If you try something today and it just it's a total failure, just didn't work out, you take that back, you reflect on it, you figure out what you're going to try next, you come back the next day and you try something else, right? And you keep working down that process until you figure out what really works. Number two, leverage outside resources. Use the immense universe of experts, expertise, thought leadership, and achievements and tools of influence that are out there and at your disposal. Folks like you know myself who've been down that journey, I empathize with people who are internal to companies who don't have a good CI culture and they need to be influencers almost more than actually leaders of uh, process improvement. I empathize with people like you because I've been there and I know how tough it is. And to some extent, I see it as inhumane what these companies are doing by bringing people in and not supporting them in their jobs. I know how frustrating, I know how stressful that can be. So um, I'm happy to share my knowledge and experience, what's worked for me and just about everybody in the continuous improvement community is 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 on the same page, right? The, the community is very open to sharing and, and helping you be successful in what you're trying to do because Success anywhere and continues improvement is success everywhere. So it's a great thing. And number three, of course, demonstrate success through your own actions, lead by example. In fact, let them see the process of improvement because sometimes the process is not very beautiful, right? <laughs> let them see the sausage making that goes into improving a process, right? I had a, pl a plant manager who I brought into a SMED event once. And it was like a four day event. And after day one or day two, I wasn't sure if this thing was gonna come out well. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was gonna go well. And I almost always feel like that. But by the end of it, somehow, it tends to pull together. And if you apply that exact same process, the SMED methodology or root cause analysis or value stream mapping, all these tools are really great tools for producing repeatably good results. So let them engage in the process, let them see the sausage making and they will start to see that this process consistently produces good results. And that confidence starts to help them further engage and adopt that continuous improvement mindset. So I wanna make one last point before I end the video here, and that is the atom. The, the, the smallest building block that makes continuous improvement successful is the habit of daily improvement. This is the most fundamental building block that is used to create all forms and methodologies for CI. And the reason it's so powerful is because humans are creatures of habit more than anything else. Even though they think they're making decisions, they may think they're being objective, most times, nine times out of 10, they're just following their habits. So if you can instill this habit of daily improvement, you've made a ton of headway toward creating a, a really strong culture of continuous improvement. And a great way of developing the habit of daily improvement is by taking the Improver Challenge. In 30 days, you'll be supplied with the technology, the coach, and the community to help you accelerate your continuous improvement journey. And once you succeed the challenge, you can be certified to become a coach and coach others along their way to developing this incredible habit as well. 
And in fact, we'll actually pay you to do so. This has been Calvin with Improver, encouraging you to learn, do, teach, and transform. Really hope you enjoyed the video. And if so, you can find this one and more just like it at improver.com. That's I-M-P-R-U-V-E-R.com. Otherwise, feel free to like, comment, and share below. And I look forward to engaging with you further on this topic. Have a great day. Thank you.